welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe. Most of you know me as ZA Reptiles though. And this is Kronk. Kronk is my Dumeril Spala who will be joining us for the video today. So today we're going to be talking about seven tips for snake keepers. So number seven, because seven is my favorite number, but also because that's how many I could think of off the top of my head that I wrote down. So seven tips for snake keepers. So a couple of these tips are going to be related to handling and some of these are going to be related to money saving, um, some money saving tricks. So the first trick is to use things you wouldn't normally think of as hides. So using, being creative. So don't go for your typical reptile hide, you know, use your creativity. So what I mean by this is like flower pots. I love the looks of a flower pot hide. I love them. Flower pots and baskets. We love a good basket hide. Good basket and good flower pot hide, okay? If you guys have seen Phoenix's enclosure, Phoenix is my corn snake. She does have a basket hide. If you wanna see more basket hides, um, go check out my good friend May's YouTube channel, Maydusa. I'll put her link in the description below because quite frankly, she is the queen of reptile DIYs. And again, we love a good basket hide, okay? So let's see other snakes. Penelope, my western hog nose, has a flower pot in her hide. If you guys want to check all of these out, you know, check out some of my recent videos because they're in there. Um, so Penelope has a flower pot hide and I absolutely adore it. The hardest part for me is finding flower pots that don't have holes in the bottom though. Gotta be careful of that. You don't want your snake to get snuck in one, which is why Phoenix doesn't have one originally. Phoenix, I wanted her to have a flower pot hide. However, I couldn't find one big enough for her that didn't also have a hole in the bottom. And being away at college on my own, I didn't really want to go through trouble of trying to figure out how to cover up that hole. So that's how I ended up with the basket hide, which I actually really, really like. So yeah, flower pots. Um, another one, a trick that I actually did with Kronk, so this works really well for bigger snakes, is cardboard boxes. Now you want to make sure you're not putting them in a super humid enclosure because that's not good. They're just gonna like get gross, break down, maybe mold a bit, uh, so not good. Um, when I first got Kronk, he was much bigger than I planned on him being. So the height I had for him was a little on the smaller side. Um, so I kind of makeshift a bigger hide for him until I could get him a bigger one. So I actually used a cardboard box and cut a little door in it and he loved that cardboard box. He spent most of his time in that cardboard box. You know, it worked great until he went to the bathroom on that side of the enclosure and his cardboard kind of soaked up the uh, the liquids. But besides that, it, uh, it worked really well. You know, it was big enough for him to fit in. It held up to him crawling on it because he loves to climb all over everything. So if you have a bigger snake and you're in a pinch and you need a bigger hide and you just haven't been able to go out and get one yet, a cardboard box, as long as you're not putting in a human enclosure, can, can work. Now I'm not saying do this permanently, you know, this is just like a temporary quick fix, but it can work. Other things people sometimes do, cutting holes out of plastic containers, you know, to-go containers, sometimes you get plastic to-go containers from restaurants or um, plastic Tupperware containers. You just gotta be creative, but make sure it is reptile safe and if you're putting it in a humid enclosure that the humidity will not affect it. Tip number two is to buy plants from craft stores. Okay, now I know a lot of people say this, this is like a money saving tip all around for all aspects of reptile keeping, but if you want your enclosures filled with plants and fake plants, which I suggest you do because it's very good enrichment and makes it look nice, get them from a craft store, okay? Even Walmart has fake plants. But reptile plants that are meant for reptile enclosures that you buy from the pet store are outrageously expensive compared to what you can just buy at the dollar store, Michaels, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, the list goes on and on, okay? And the best part about Hobby Lobby and Joann's and Michaels is there is always coupons, okay? Always coupons. So most of my plants in my enclosures have come from Michaels or Walmart because that was all I had at home, but mostly Michaels and always purchased with a coupon. Now keep in mind, most of those craft stores take competitor coupons, 
So if you're going to Michael's, look at the coupons for Hobby Lobby and Joann's also to make sure you're getting the best deal. For example, I went and bought some stuff the other day at Michael's and I used a coupon from Joann's because Joann's had a 60% off coupon. Michael's only had a 40% off coupon, so you bet your butts. I was using that 60% off coupon from Joann's when I was shopping at Michael's. So fake plants, get them from a craft store and always look for coupons. So tip number three is actually the reason I wanted to take Kronk out for this video. And that is, it's along the lines of handling. So tip number three is to tap train or hook train your snakes. Now I'm not saying do this for all of your snakes. Um, sometimes, you know, if you're nervous about a snake or you have a snake with a very strong feeding response, tap training and hook training can be good. So I actually started doing this because of Kronk. Dumeril's boas are extremely sweet snakes, very docile, however, have been known to have very strong feeding responses, which is the only downside to them. I got very lucky. Kronk has next to no feeding response whatsoever. So I don't have to worry about him like shooting out of the enclosure and grabbing my arm when I go in to grab him. However, just in case his attitude changes down the road or as he grows, I want to make sure that I am prepared and that I have him hook trained because that's what most Jumeril's parents do that I've talked to or that I've seen online is a lot of people with big snakes suggest hook training or tap training just as a preventative measure. And I completely agree with it. Now I'm not saying hook the snake and use that to get it out. Tap training and hook training is just simply taking a hook or if you don't have a hook, something else, toilet paper tube, um, something along those lines and you tap the snake to let it know that it's not feeding time. Okay, being tapped with a cold metal hook is a lot different than having something warm come in, like your hand or a mouse. So it kind of is like, all right, I'm about to be held, I'm not getting fed right now. And it kind of gets rid of that feeding response. Ideally, that's the plan. So with him, I open up the door, I take the hook, I tap him, you know, wait till he's like awake and alert, and he knows that he's not getting fed, and then I reach in and pull him out. So I don't use the hook to pick them up, uh, I know most people use hooks for that reason. I simply just use it to tap them so they know that I'm coming in to pick them up. So when you're hook training or tap training, tap them, take them out. When you're going to feed, just open the door, put the mouse or the rat in, okay? You don't wanna tap them when it's feeding time. You don't wanna confuse them by having all these mixed signals. All right, tip four is for those of you that live with other people or just wanna feel more organized and so when you have frozen thawed mice, okay? You're buying frozen mice, you keep them in your freezer. You're like me, you don't have the room or the money or space for an extra freezer just to store mice in. Especially when I learned at home or when I was in college, the roommates, you know, roommates didn't really care for the fact that I had frozen rodents in our freezer. So this is what I did, okay? If you live with other people, they'll appreciate this put it in something that they cannot see into. When I first got Phoenix, cause she was my first snake and I got mice for her, I had it in a brown paper bag, stuck it in the freezer, okay? After that, I moved on to a popsicle box and I'd keep them in a popsicle box. Now, if you're gonna do that, make sure you let everyone know not to eat the popsicles because I did that when I moved home. My mom went to go get some popsicles and needless to say, they weren't popsicles. So if you have roommates or family that don't want to see the mice, just put them in a different container that makes it look normal. Popsicle container, any kind of food container, just make sure they know that there isn't actually food in there so they don't try to go and eat it and get a rude surprise, okay? Um, now if you want to be just organized, collectively having your mice together, you can get a bin for your freezer just to store it in. I keep all my mice in a bin that I just got at the dollar store on the top shelf in my freezer, okay? All my mice are in there, all my rats are in there. It makes me feel organized. On nights where I pull food out to thaw, I just take the whole bin out so I can easily just flip through, find what I need, take that out and just put the bin back in the freezer. Okay, tip number five. When you're decorating the enclosure, it is good to put something in there that they can rub on, like a rock or some sticks, something that's a little bit rough so that they can rub on it to help them get shed off. I have found this extremely, extremely helpful with some of my snakes. Um, it just, it's very helpful, especially if your snake struggles with shedding, it just gives them something that they can rub on to help get that shed off. Tip number six, for water bowls, 
do not bother going and buying those extremely expensive water bowls meant for reptiles unless you can find a really good deal or you absolutely have to have it because they are atrociously expensive. A simple dish for a dog or a cat will work just fine. You can find them in tons of different sizes depending on the size snake you have or you could simply just use like a Tupperware container, especially if you have a larger snake, that's definitely a cheaper option. What are you doing? That's definitely a cheaper option. So a couple of my snakes in the past have had water dishes from the dollar store. They're just food dishes meant for dogs or cats. I recently changed to zero my milk snakes bowl from a dollar store dish to a really nice bowl I got at Pier One Imports for $10. And I love that bowl. It is gorgeous. I think it fits him so well. I just, I love it. So if you just look at bowls, Walmart, Pier One, um, Home Goods, TG Maxx, all those places, you might be able to find some really good bowls that can work as water dishes for your snakes. And if you need really big ones, Tupperware containers or tubs from like the dollar store or even Walmart will work just as fine. Now tip number seven and my final tip for this video is for those of you that buy frozen thawed mice. Now I know when you go to the pet store you buy a couple, it's kind of pricey to go and buy a couple. So my tip is to buy in bulk. So I buy mice and rats for my snakes twice a year and that is it. There are mice and rat breeders that breed them specifically for snake food. Um, not too far from where I am now, but they vent at one of the local expos, um, both in the spring and in the fall. So I usually stock up a six month supply. It's much cheaper to buy in bulk, especially from a company that intends to sell them in bulk. It's much cheaper than going to buy the pet store and buying like one every week or one here and there. Now you really shouldn't buy a year's worth of mice. By the time you use that last one at the end of the year, the nutritional value in it has probably decreased quite significantly. Um, however, I think six months is plenty of time to have a frozen mouse and still have it be good for your snake. So I calculate what I need for six months, how often that snake is gonna eat or should eat should they not be picky and skip a meal. And I do the math, I figure it all out, I place my order and I pick it up at the expo. I think this last expo, I paid between 40 and $50 for a six month supply of rats and mice for my snakes. So if you have the ability to do that, I highly suggest if you're going out of town to an expo, see what vendors they have, see if you can do a pre-order, see what their prices are and do it that way. Cause it'll save you so much more money in the long run. And of course, if you feed live, which I try not to because I don't really agree with it personally. However, you know, if your snake needs to do it to eat, then whatever. Cause like I said, I have two snakes that won't eat frozen thawed. So you can always breed your own mice. I don't know how much, I mean, I guess that's kind of a savings in the long run because you don't have to buy mice. However, you still have to take care of the mice and put money and time into them. So I don't know how much of a savings that would be. Um, so personally, I don't do that. People have told me I should do that. And I was like, I'm not gonna breed mice for the sake of two snakes. So I'm like, I'll buy the mice. Um, but yeah, so I don't know much about that, but buying frozen thawed way in advance, recommend it. All right, so those were my seven tips for snake keepers. Just seven tips that I have found useful that just popped in my head that I threw on this list and decided to put into this video. Um, if you have any other good tips for snake keepers, definitely drop them in the comments below so you can share with other people. We can all get tips from each other. Maybe some of you will have tips for me that I haven't thought of or that I might find useful or other people reading the comments might find useful. So definitely if you can think of anything that I didn't say in this video, leave it in the comment below. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.